is Advanced Algebra Lesson 2-7, Fitting a Model to Data, and this is Part 1. What is a mathematical model? It's a description of a real-world situation using the language and concepts of mathematics. Generally, for this class, we'll involve coming up with a function to model a situation. In this le lesson, we are looking for direct and inverse variation models. As we progress through the course, we'll look at linear models, we'll look at quadratic models, and polynomial models. But specifically today, we'll be looking at direct and inverse variation models. We have come up with a process in which to create these models. And we'll go through two examples in this video to create a model given some data. So the first step you want to follow is to do a scatter plot of the data. We're going to look at the graph. We just got done studying several types or, or several variation equations or functions, and we looked at what the graph looked like. So now we should be able to see which graph matches the function. So we're going to look at the graph to see which vari equation, variation equation would have a graph with a similar shape over the domain of data. If there's more than one, you will need to do trial and error in step three. And you'll find as we go through this that whenever we have an inverse variation function, the two graphs look so similar when we only see quadrant one, so we actually have to do trial and error when we are dealing with inverse. And we'll do one of those examples in this video. You'll need to set up a general variation equation that fits the data. You're going to plug in a data point and solve your general equation for the constant of variation. So you're going to find your k. Then you're going to use that constant, constant of variation in your general equation to come up with a specific equation. And then you're going to check your answer with other data points. And then sometimes you're going to be asked to predict what other data points might look like. We're going to do this first guide ex example together. We have some data. We're looking at time in air and distance fallen. And so we have a data table put together. So time in the air is one second, and the distance that this ball has fallen is 4.9 meters. If it's been in the air for 1.5 seconds, it has fallen 11 meters, and so on. And so what we're going to start off with is step one. We're going to do a scatter pot, plot graph of the data. And as you notice here, the graph is already done for you. Second, we want to look at the shape of the graph. So and if we look at it, it's kind of a little bit curved. And so I don't, I don't think it's completely straight. If it was, this point would be down here, and this point would be down here. So it has a slight curve to it. So I'm going to say that this fits a direct squared variation. So the formula for this would be d equals k times t squared. So I, I'm going to set up three and four, steps three and four are going to kind of put together here. So the equation d equals k times t squared. And I'm going to insert one data point. I'm going to use the one 4.9. I'm going to insert 4.9 in place of d and one in place of t. So I have 4.9 equals k times one squared. I'm going to solve for k, and that gives me 4.9 meters per second squared. So now I have a value for k, and just like we did in solving other variation equations, we're now going to take that, that k and insert it into our general equation and make a more specific equation, so that would be d equals 4.9t squared. Then the last step that we're going to do is we're just going to check other, our answer with other data points. So here we have time in the air, the distance that the ball has fallen, and then what would that be if we used our model? So if we insert one in place of it, well we've already done that, that's going to be 1.5, or one, I'm sorry, 4.9. But if I insert 1.5 in place of t, I get 11. If I get 2 in place of t, I get 19.6. 2.5, I get 30.6 and 3, I get 44.1. So what that means is that the model that we have come up with for our data matches our data very nicely. The next example is going to be a little bit more complicated. As you see, I've graphed the data points here. And it's not linear, and it's not a direct square it actually is looking like it's in the inverse family. 
but I'm not sure because I'm only seeing quadrant one, I'm not sure if it's an inverse or if it's an inverse square. So in order to answer the question, I have to first of all come up with a model, but in order to find the model, I'm going to have to do a, a little bit of trial and error here. So the first thing I want to do is try and see if it's going to be a, an, it just a straight inverse variation. So I'm going to go about the problem as if it were an inverse variation. As you can see here, I set it up using it as if it was an inverse variation. So the number of tiles is equal to our constant over the length of the side of a tile. I take one data point and insert it in my problem. I'm going to use 4 and 1944. Solve for k and I get 7,776. So now I make my specific equation using that value for k and I get t equals 7,776 over l. So I now need to test to see if that model works. So I'm going to take another data point. I'm going to take 6 and 864 and plug that into my equation. 6 in place of l and 864 in place of t. And when I divide 7,776 by 6, I get 1,296. That is not equal to 864. So now I need to proceed with my next option. And that's is if it, that is if it's an inverse squared relationship. So I'm going to take the inverse squared relationship and insert a data point. So I've got 1944 in place of t and 4 in place of L. So when I multiply that through to solve for K, I get K value at 31,104. So now I make my specific equation again, 31,104 over, or T is equal to 31,104 over L squared. So now we test another data point. I'm going to use 6 and 864 again put that in place of L and T. So 31,104 divided by 6 squared is in fact 864. So I know that this variation equation matches my, mo matches my data. So my specific equation, T equals 31,104 over L squared is my specific equation. But the real question was how many square tiles with 8 inch sides would be needed? So now I'm going to use my specific equation and use the value for 8 in place of L. So 31,104 divided by 8 is 486. So that means I'm going to need 486 tiles for my project. And if you look here, if I go to 8 on the graph and I go to 460 or 86, it, do, it, would, it would land right here where my, my double or my crossed arrows are here. And that fits right in with our graph also. So we know that we have we have proceeded correctly with this model. In class we will have an opportunity to work with more examples and create more models. And then in 2.8 we're going to find another method that we can use to finding a model to fit our data, but this time we're going to be able to do it without graphing. So this concludes Lesson 2.7.